I still haven't explained um, about BET and the plays I'm working on or sort of drama projects. Uh, it takes the form really of sort of behind the scenes, the making of, the not making of. Um, that's more the style sorts of radio shows I get involved in seem to work as. Um, John, John May says I'm not really writing any plays, I'll just talk about them. And that, that might be true to some extent. I do tend to change the the title that's in my head, but they all they all fit together in a sort of way. They're mostly about the, the state of the campus at the moment. Uh, it comes about in Exeter because of the uh, student accommodation that has taken over the city. And that started the question, well, why? Why is the higher education still thinking about buildings when things are moving online? And during the pandemic, that's that's got more so. But it all still seems to be a bit of a mystery. I can't find out what's going on or what the what the ideas are, because there, there must be some sort of change happening. Uh, anyway, this this week, that's to say, last week, broadcast on a Thursday, this show uh, was Bet or Bet Fest. Look for Bet Fest as a tag on Twitter. Um, the Bet Show, which is a sort of technology show for schools, mostly schools, uh, we have been going to that the last two or three years. Uh, we've phoned in to the Wild Show on a Thursday and uh, JD has stayed in the studio. And uh, we've explained a few a few things there. And uh, I think it's actually connecting with the university scene uh, which for me has become um, a siege of uh, the Fortress University based in Kendall. Partly because I sometimes get to Kendall, but also because the castle there is in a ruin. If you, if you haven't heard the previous drama shows or bits and pieces on YouTube or Twitter, um, look for Siege K as a tag. We'll find bits of it, but d just briefly... And um, I'm, I'm, I, am, I might go off topic a bit. I'm not sure how long this is going to take. Um, storytelling. Well, I'm going to practice storytelling because going back to the um, the shop windows, the art projects, whatever's going on about that, it, it all had to be ready in time for storytelling week. And the advice from the storytelling people is um, to practice telling the story. So I, th I think it goes back, or let's say it goes back as far as uh, Peter Horrocks, who was then Vice-Chancellor of the Open University, uh, given a lecture at Durham, where they've got a, a very good castle in, in good condition, um, which he, he gave it about the Fortress University, but they, they haven't used that title. I think the YouTube would get more views if they used Fortress University. But anyway, he was trying to justify spending more money on future learn uh, because he was coming under a certain amount of criticism for closing down regional support centres and in, in general spending less money on buildings and much more on building up a platform, uh, future learn, which he argued um, would open up the university to a wider range of um, people benefiting from the education and also connecting with, with more people on a global basis. And um, it, he, I don't think he convinced anybody because he, he had to resign. There was a lot of resistance to what he was doing. And the, the Guardian had an interview with him, which I think was um, not not very enthusiastic about what, what he was doing, so, so that. Um, so I've I've been really looking at the Fortress University and the idea of ruins and asking the storyteller to um, imagine ruins of, of a Fortress University some point in the future and to, uh, well I call it a routine he, he, he makes, a, uh, it's, it's not exactly a comedy routine um, but he's, he has things to say as the stand-up philosopher and um, this could be in the setting of what a university is about but imagined at some point in the future but um, 
he hasn't he hasn't actually done anything yet and he he got puzzled about halfway through last year as to whether it was still an issue because everything about moving online in the first um lockdown seemed to be quite obvious that the, the universities had an immediate cash flow problem or should do if they recompensed students for undelivered lectures or unnecessary student accommodation or whatever else was going on um but also a long term issue because if if things move online um the value of the campus real estate is less obvious but it might it might it might not work out like that it might be that a larger number of students can attend the same university split over several attendances during the year or maybe there's a global demand for an infinite amount of higher education uh, a lot of which will end up in the UK like I'm not, I don't know don't know about any of that anyway where where am I yes going back to the um the dramas because um in the absence of enough information to do that as journalism I think drama is the best way of coping with this so I've imagined it as a siege uh Kendall Castle is going to work best as ruins but there are, there are two seats outside or several seats st- there were well, there's stones really but they're carved into seats just outside the walls and I've imagined uh one of them for Scott Galloway who is based in the United States and has a marketing approach and he thinks the degree is now ridiculously expensive and uh he's working on sorry I've got I've forgotten the name of it at the moment I'm just going to got to carry on with my ramble and the the uh the details will crop up later um but it, you'll find it anyway if you find Scott Galloway you'll find the name of the of the the offer for uh courses which are to a sort of business school level uh but significantly cheaper and exclusively online and there's one coming up about platforms and at the moment i think the, the idea of a platform university is seen almost entirely negatively um it's not a good thing uh, that's my take on what is being said um but something like future learn or coursera or edx the mooc the mooc scene certainly started out with a base in higher education and with sort of mixed support and it's gradually become more vocational let's say and some of the courses are coming from large companies um google or or ibm various various other ones so it's seen as even less uh supportable by some academics but i i think all of that could be um re-examined over time um because uh Future Learn, for example, um, partly because the Open University didn't want to continue investing, and nobody else was very interested from the UK, as, as far as can be seen. Um, an Australian je- jobs site, Seek Group, invested. So, yeah, you can say, well, that's terrible. It's all going vocational, and um, skills. That's not really what higher education is about. Um, employability why why is that a concern um but then again maybe if if there's a viable platform viable methods coming up of that situation it's it's worth looking at um the o- the other side of the of the the ruins in the Kendall situation i've imagined um uh is a is a sort of ai tech um position there um Donald Clark is sitting in that seat at the moment as I imagine it and um you can find you can find him on YouTube as well um and the manifesto for teaching online I've read bits and pieces out of that on a sort of stage in the center of the castle but there's also um a tower in which the vice chancellor might be sitting 
very hard to imagine what they're doing. There's very little information on what what is being thought in in UK campus at this at this time. I would say, but this this um, comes onto the news uh, this week, which was that at bet uh, Sir Anthony Selden spoke about the impact of digital technology on both schools and universities. Um, he, he has been Vice-Chancellor at uh, University of Buckingham and it, it somehow it seems that as people retire maybe they can speak more freely but he, he certainly spoke very freely and um, said more or less that he, th- he thought the, the, the education being provided was not really suitable for the kind of uh, employment that's uh, necessary at this time. So it's quite quite an interesting uh, take, as well as what other things which were said by Apple and Microsoft along similar lines. I I, I think uh, all all that was said at BET it might well be looked at by people from higher education because it's a uh, it it's it's part of a mix where if if there's a worry about uh, the kind of education the the current government seems to favour. Um, the arguments about what's required for employment could work in various ways, I think. Anyway, that that, that will come back to a future, future occasion. Um, the main thing is that I, I think I think Sir, Ant- Sir Anthony Selden's uh, presentation, which I guess will be public at some point, uh, is the sort of thing that might be viewed by someone in the Vice Chancellor's Tower. So that's going to be a plot development, as far as I'm concerned. So far, it's just been a, a, a sort of situation in which um, the marketing and the AI are outside the walls. The students were inside the walls, but they've gone away for a break, and nobody's quite sure if they're coming back again or or why they would come back again. So that's that's that one. That is Siege K. But um, I'm just going to go on now and do the. There will be a, there will be some more music le- later on in the time available. But another play I'm thinking of is a walk around King's Cross, because th- and this will be imagined. I don't I don't know quite when I'm going to meet uh, J D Chris or John, uh, but we might we might get some sound bits of sound via. Um, uh, I don't know, swapping MP3 here and there, let's say. But we can imagine c- coming back from Bet via King's Cross, which we have visited, and uh, there's a lot of stuff goes on around King's Cross, and probably concentrating on, on the building that is uh, both YouTube and Google. Uh, we meet up with Source Dubious, who tells us uh, that that is uh, caused by the policy of one building, two companies. And um, we'll, we'll have to get Source Dubious to explain this a bit more as well. Um, really, what, we, what we're going to do is, is sort of find out what can be done in terms of remixing bits of text and comparing it with how you can remix bits of um, video or sound because the the YouTube studio is extremely hard to get into. I, I know I've said all this before, but um, for people who haven't haven't um, listened to previous uh, editions of the drama show, or just need an update, um, this is this is this is really a dramatic situation. I would say, because um, there is a gatekeeper, the reception in the Google building, which you you can get into. Um, but what they tell you is if you want to go further into the YouTube studio, you need thousands of subscribers and all sorts of things which don't make don't make a lot of sense to us. Um, but essentially we would we would have a look at whatever else was going on around uh, around King's Cross. So the the Samsung cafe is very interesting and also the um, Royal National Institute for the Blind, which is on the other side of Euston Road. 
but it's that's the sort of place that um, used to used to turn up at Olympia. When Bet was at Olympia, there were all kinds of nooks and crannies, sort of balcony corners and um, places that all sorts of organisations could afford a slot. Whereas since it's been at Excel, it's been good in certain ways, but it's mostly quite big tech companies in the centre and there's there's nothing around the edges pretty much or not in the not to the extent not trying to upset anybody um the way i'm describing it but um the rnrb in terms of voice interface with uh, technology and devices uh they're well worth a visit uh what is that oh yeah there's another thing there's another bit uh i wanted to say which was about the center for uh, performance, bar management, and camera studies, which has been on you on uh, on Facebook for a while, and uh, I think ought to move to the Elephant and Castle, because the University of the Arts London uh, is on so many locations. I think they could give up on one or two of them. Uh, they're in King's Cross. They're going to be at, in Stratford, the Olympic site and um, the London College of Communication I think that's going to be replaced or move into the Elephant Shopping Centre and I, I, you know, just going back to this idea that as things move online they may not need so much space um, maybe they can mix and match it with, with other things so uh, that seems to be a good reason to move what what was a, a sort of way of financing video and cameras um, but it maybe isn't needed anymore because um, the original idea was if, if you if you were making a, a certain amount of income through a bar that would um, that would finance the performance you could book a singer or something like that and it would also finance the the videos which would show what was happening and get more people in on the next occasion and eventually you'd, you'd improve the cameras and the, the video but I'm not sure that's needed anymore because everybody's at home with some sort of camera or microphone and um, the the actual difficulty of finding the cameras that's I don't think that's the problem there's there's something else needs needs sorting out and and by the way when is MIDI TV going to appear they've been um, around the corner just about to happen for quite a while now the Exeter Street Arts Festival was in August it, did, it didn't actually happen I mean it was it was expected and then uh, it, I think it got too successful there was too much expectation so it, it, it didn't happen but um, MIDI TV will come along and um, so yeah a King's Cross walk with discussion that's a that's another one to work on. I think I think that's enough, um, because um, Chris Norton, as I mentioned last week, did get me a a um, a token, so there can be proper MP3s on this show, not just bits and pieces that turn up everywhere, or transfers from CD. I think MP3 is the way forward. Uh, so the rest of the show will be um, Barita Afrosol or Tony Braxton or Kem K E M for some reason not not well distributed um in the UK. Don't know what my town are thinking of. <laughs>